This is the Extra Point Podcast from Arizona's family. All right, why can we not have nice stuff in Arizona sports? It was uh, just over 24 hours ago. We're ready for Kevin Durant's home debut. He twists an ankle. He's out three weeks. Let's hear from one of the best voices in Arizona sports. He literally has, I think, the best voice in Arizona sports. The one, the only, Jody Yaler from Fox Sports 910 here in Phoenix. And Jody... Uh, what was your reaction when you saw the news hit that Kevin Durant would not play? Like everybody else, you're just like, this This can't be real. Like, this is clearly, this is, you know, this this can't be real. I mean, there was no one on the court. There was no action. He didn't, you know, get rolled up on. There was, it was just like uh, air and, and the basketball gods conspiring against the Phoenix Suns once again. And, you know, honestly, at this point, after watching it for three games, it almost felt too good to be true for those three games. So you're like, okay, I guess I guess we had to be knocked back down again. Oh, yes, we did. We, we get knocked down quite a bit here in Arizona. We get up. It takes us a while. How much do you think this, this sets the Suns back when it comes to talk of a title? Pretty significantly. Um, you know, obviously people that watch the three games are like wow this looks better than i thought kevin durant missed a couple weeks with a knee injury he pops in they're combining for 70 plus points they're boat racing teams they beat the mavericks how much do they really need them and it's like listen once you get to the playoffs the defenses are different the the intensity is different they're going to need to know each other's game a little bit better not not devin booker and kevin durant who are basically kindred basketball spirits that have found true basketball love with each other it's it's everybody else. It's everyone else needs to know. Not everyone is a basketball savant like Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. And so I think it's pretty significant. And I think it's going to be uh, an additional challenge with a few games in the regular season, maybe to, to tune up before a first round matchup, by the way, Mark, that could be the Warriors, could be the Clippers, could be the Mavericks, could be it could be a bunch of really good teams. Yeah, and I, I worry that they mortgage the future and there's there's some buyer's remorse. Now, it's only three weeks, but when you look at the trade and you look what Mikhail Bridges is doing right now in Brooklyn, do, do you have buyer's remorse? I don't, know. Here, I'm going to try to convince you, all right? I'm sure a million people have tried to convince you not to, to, to think that they mortgage the future. Um, Mikhail Bridges is putting up some really nice numbers for a really, you know, pretty bad in Brooklyn Nets team. Most dudes in the NBA, if you just gave them a green light on a team when wins and losses don't really matter, they're going to put up nice numbers. Mikhail's a nice player. You are not building a championship contender around Mikhail Bridges now, next year, or anytime in the future. Um, very nice player. I hate to be in the position to be like trashing one of the most beloved sons in recent years, but he's not a championship level player to build a team around. What you're seeing in Brooklyn is there's no one else. They need someone to get buckets. They're not winning very many games. When the emphasis is on winning, then I think there'll be more of a scrutiny on Mikael Bridges. The second thing is, you know, with draft picks, you, you can always find draft picks. They're, they're always around. There's always picks. And the Suns have a first-round pick every other year with, with a championship-caliber roster. It's kind of ideal. You don't want to have to pay a rookie and stash him on the bench every year. And then the third thing, why I don't have buyer's remorse, is because um, – you know, I think people like, you know, mortgaging the future, but I don't know the future's ever been brighter when you've got an owner that's willing to do whatever it takes to win. I don't think that's a one off thing. I think as long as Matt Ishby is dialed in, this team will find a way to compete, to contend. You know, they, they might end up spore, spending more money this offseason to make the Warriors look like the Dollar General store. Like Matt Ishby has got, he's got deep pockets and he's going to spend it, man. Do you think a title is still a possibility this year? Yeah, I think a possibility. I think that's the best way to phrase it. Um, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's more likely than not. But I do think it's a distinct possibility. Did I offer enough wiggle room there? I didn't. I didn't. I'm not like going hard first take. Yes, the Suns are no. It's. I try to deliver some nuance, and to me, yeah, it's a possibility. But I think with this injury, it's less likely than it was 36 hours ago for sure. Well, and I wonder, too, as much as I, I miss Mikael Bridges, not just with pregame warm-ups, it's not anywhere near as entertaining, but his defense. And, and, and at the end of his time here in Phoenix, I was watching him play with my son, and my son said, oh, my gosh, he looks like Kobe, which I, there were a couple times where he went off, and you're like, yeah, he can score. But if you take his defense out of the equation, the Suns, I don't know that the, Kendrick Perkins made the point the other day that, that there's, there's just not the depth there 
Do, do you worry about that? Like, if, if Chris Middleton oh, yeah. wants to go off, who's going to guard him? Yeah, no, uh, depth is a huge concern. I mean, they're basically playing role player roulette for the next two weeks and um, or next two months, potentially. And I, I don't know that anyone has a tremendous amount of confidence in any of those guys. Josh Okogie can get after it defensively. He's a pretty big liability shooting the rock. You know, T.J. Warren got real old real fast. At first, I thought in that trade, he might have been a forgotten guy. Well, there's a reason he was a forgotten guy. He can't even get off the bench with Monty Williams. Terrence Ross, we saw what Luka did to him on Sunday. That's what every team is going to do, and that's what we know the NBA playoffs are about. It's about hunting and finding the weak link on the floor, and the Suns have a few guys. I, ultimately, Mark, I think what the story of this season is going to be is, man, it's amazing that Kevin Durant's on this team. By the way, he's under contract with this team for a few more years. This summer, I think there's be, going to be some reconfiguring of this team salary-wise. I don't think you can spend $30 million on a center who's probably going to get less than 10 touches a game. And that's not a knock on D.A. I think he's a very good role player, but it's he made sense at $30 million when he didn't have Kevin Durant. With Kevin Durant, you'd probably rather use those resources in a different way, is my guess, unless they win the championship then, hey, everybody everybody wins. So it, would, is it fair to say that this time next year it is championship or bust? Yes, 100%. I, I think, listen, the, the hardest part about the Kevin Durant injury is that we now have to potentially hold our breath for another full NBA regular season to get back to this point where he would be healthy next year. So, yes, it, with a 35-year-old superstar – with a team button up against the luxury tax, they are facing a mandate to win a championship at some point in this window. And as we've seen, like, I don't know what you think about this, Mark. Like, I thought about this with Kevin Durant. Of, do we just expect too much from older guys in sports now? Because a few guys have been incredible later into their careers. But, like, 35, and I'm in my 40s now, so I hate saying this, but, like, 35 is pretty old for every other generation of NBA superstars. But with Kevin Durant, we're like, oh, he's going to be amazing. I, I don't know how much longer we're getting peak Durant. And I, I think that's a big concern going forward, but still worth what they paid, in my opinion. Well, and I, I think, yeah, just with nutrition and training and, and just seeing Tom Brady and, and LeBron and, um, you know, right. Roger Clemens. And wait, that's a bad example. But I mean, <laughs> you, it, it, you just you have seen guys do it and you've seen guys do it at this high of a level. And you've always seen Kevin Durant uh, play at this high of a level. And, and you think, why wouldn't it continue? But you look at Chris Paul, um, I, I, there's there's some concern. I think, you know, last year's playoff series against the New Orleans, Orleans Pelicans just just took something out of him. He had to dig so deep. Maybe he gets back to that spot in the playoffs where he has to dig that deep, but there is concern. Do you share my concern? Not only about Paul, but, you know, campaign, love the guy. I can't say that that's not going to happen, what happened last year in the playoffs this year. Campaign, you're a parent, so you can understand this analogy. Campaign is the kid at the public playground that you just have to keep eyes on at all time because something insane. You just get a feeling every time the kid is within like a 10 foot radius that he's going to throw sand in your kid's face but, or like, but it could be awesome too. It took, it could be but, totally yeah. awesome. <laughs> he could also do a double backflip <laughs> off the top slide and stick the landing. Like that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Like you just have to keep eyes on him at all times. Cause it's wildly unpredictable. Yeah. Uh, Chris Paul, listen, the, the crazy part about Chris Paul is, like, Kevin Durant is 35, but he's he's a very slender 35. The problem with Chris Paul is, like, for many people as they get older, he's also gotten a little bit wider, it felt like, as this season approached, which here's my defense of Chris Paul, but I do share your concern. We For two years, we were like, Chris, why are you playing all out in, you know, December and January when we really need you in the playoffs? Then Chris Paul shows up this year. He's a little puffy. He's a little out of shape. He's not really Chris Paul. He's load managing kind of the right way, the old school way, and everybody freaks out. Now, what I'm freaking out about are the shooting percentages, right? I think that's the big concern is, to me, the Dallas Mavericks sav sagged off Chris Paul, daring him to shoot like he was Josh Okoge or Jock Landale. And Chris Paul's got to hit those shots. First of all, he's got to take those shots. 
four of five the other night from three-point land, which was very important against the Thunder. If he shoots the ball well, the Phoenix Suns can win the NBA championship. I think Chris Paul's the biggest X factor on this team. If he shoots the ball well, assuming everybody's healthy, they can win the NBA championship. If he looks like uh, a kid shooting a three-pointer for the first time with an adult-sized basketball the way he has looked at times this year, the Phoenix Suns cannot win an NBA championship. Bigger concern for you in the playoffs, the Warriors throwing in threes and, and just being able to throw the switch or the Denver Nuggets with Murray taking another step? Man, you know, I I have continuously thought the Warriors were going to flip a switch. I have thought the Warriors de- deserve the respect that comes with being a defending champion, just taking their time in the regular season. But they've lost so many games. They've lost so many games on the road. I do think I'm kind of itching for that fight in the playoffs. Like, I would love to see the Suns and Warriors finally stare each other down in a best of seven. But but I think the Nuggets concern me more. Um, Listen, Jokic, this is probably a topic for a different podcast. Like, I I do not think Jokic should win a third straight NBA MVP. Um, I just think it's crazy that he would win a third straight MVP. But that team is really good. And Reggie Jackson was a really nice pickup. They have three dudes that shoot 40% from the three-point line. That's dangerous in a playoff series. I I do think the Suns could beat them, but I think that would be a meat grinder of a series. Man, Reggie Jackson, as much as it pains me to admit this, uh, when he was with the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals against the Suns um, in 2021, I I grew an affinity for – he's like an assassin. Like with the – he like puts the glasses on and just – I mean, can can he's like Vinny Johnson used to be with the Pistons. It's like the microwave. (laughs) All of a sudden, Reggie's on fire and you've got no shot. Two years ago, he was the best or second best player on a Western Conference Finals Clippers team. And then this year, they're just like, "Ah, we're just going to we're just going to set you free and bring in Russell Westbrook. Like, that's one of the weirdest decisions I've ever seen a contending team make in the NBA, because I would take and I think 29 other teams would take Reggie Jackson over Russell Westbrook every day of the week. And then they just delivered it. Not only did they buy him out, Mark. He ended up with a team that's the number one seed in the West, the same conference as the Clippers. It makes no sense. It's absolutely insane. Uh, Thoughts on if the Suns were to match up with the Los Angeles Lakers and the frustration that's still there from 2021, do you want any part of LeBron and AD, or is it more like, uh, yeah, bring them on. The the Suns can blow right through them. Okay, so I got to qualify this here because I I do live and work professionally in Phoenix. Um, I I hate the Lakers. I despise Preach. the city of Los Angeles. Their sports teams. The traffic, um, the I find them obnoxious. The nice. traffic stinks. Beach is okay. If you can aff- I'm not a billionaire, so I can't. I couldn't afford to live near the beach. Uh, it's it's not my it's not my jam. Um, I want nothing to do with a healthy Lakers team. I want nothing to do. I will happily let some other Western Conference team take on that challenge in the first round. Listen, when they are healthy, if they ever get healthy, and obviously that's a huge if, that team got a lot better at the trade deadline. Like Jared Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley, Austin Reeves are like real deal role players. Anthony Davis, when he's been on the floor, has been really really good i want no part of that because lebron james like kevin durant when he's on the floor he still looks like lebron james despite the magical hairline that disappears and reappears like like a like a magic trick um i i want no part of the lakers i want the kings i want the mavericks there's a couple teams that i'm licking my chops at grizzlies you want the gri- do you want the at- grizzlies or no do you i i don't i don't uh, know if that that that's like the, the the psycho in the room that you know you're you're kind of you, you, you <laughs> might throw sand in your face or you know bashing your car windows. The, the whole the whole team of campaigns basically. <laughs> um, it, so the John Moran stuff's pretty weird, right? There's there's a lot of uh, speculation right now. He's going to miss the rest of the season. We don't know. They said the next four games with John Morant. I, I'm not afraid of Memphis. But again, and I, by the way, I think the Suns can beat any team in the West. I'm not scared. I don't think the Suns should be like ducking teams based on the, the end of the season. If we're just talking preference, though, Memphis, man, did you, you remember last year that right. that place is tough to play and win in Memphis. So they're not only a team full of campaigns, 
they feel like a city full of campaigns and John Morant's. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not signing up for that unless I have to. And if the Suns do have to play them, I do think they would beat them. But um, they're on my list of like, yeah, maybe, maybe let someone else take care of that. Yeah, very fitting that I think campaign is from Memphis. So that's that's very fitting, right? Oh, there. is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is this is the most like TV tabloid. Um, need to fill some time. Don't really have any. We we didn't go do a, a feature on a high school swimmer. But uh, okay, <laughs> in like five weeks. Will we be talking? Will the headline read, is the NBA regular season uh, even even worth playing? Does it even matter? The last six games of the regular season matter. I think we found that out last year when Cam Johnson got injured and then the last two weeks the Suns took a nosedive that they never really pulled themselves out of. So, no, I mean, the regular season, they got problems. And uh, I think – reducing the amount of games is the obvious answer they'll never do that because teams will lose local revenue with local gates and all that but i i think the nba regular season still matters i i just can't get over and again i'm getting older mark but like it used to be a big deal when one superstar got injured for any period of time and now it feels like every sport every year every week someone is getting injured and my completely unscientific made up out of thin air talk radio guy let me pull this out and throw it out there is i think players are built like ferraris and they need to be built like work trucks and i just feel like the grinds of these season are just wearing these dudes down but everyone's injured all the time it's just now it's not really a postseason to determine who the best team is it's a postseason to determine who the healthiest team is that was at least pretty good during the regular season. And I, I, I don't know why that's that. We're supposed to have more information and more advancements, and yet dudes are getting injured more and more, at least uh, to my unscientific eye. Well, and is it as simple as just a team throwing in more threes and winning the game? I kind of – I was joking the other day that uh, I think the Western Conference might hinge upon – Maxi Kleba getting back for the Dallas Mavericks and being able to make threes. I worry the Suns, great mid-range game, great mid-range shooter, but if you get in a three-ball contest, I don't know that they win that one. Well, I mean, to flip it a little bit, but to expand on that, if Josh Okogie or Terrence Ross or one of those rotation guys hits three threes in a game, they're unbeatable. I mean, no one's going to beat them. I mean, it's basically a three-point contest for those role players. Now, there's also a good chance in a best-of-seven series that four out of the seven games a Kogi and Tory Craig are going to go one for nine from the three point line. But yeah, I think the NBA, um, you know, the, the offensive numbers are out the, out the, out just crazy right now. The defense is going to tighten up. And I think to me, that's really what we're seeing. Mark is like the difference between the regular season and postseason was always a pretty stark contrast. I think they're two completely different sports. I, I don't even think the regular season really even looks like or anything resembling postseason basketball because once you get into the postseason, it's a little more familiar. There's a little bit more strategy than just bombs away from three. But um, it's it's pretty wild right now. It's like the difference between the XFL and the NFL, regular season and, and postseason NBA. Can you name all the XFL teams? Go. Um. I know that one of them has – I've bet on and lost, and that's Battle the last Hawks. time I can't – Roughnecks. Uh, the team in Hold Vegas, on. Vipers. Yeah, Vipers. US, is there – am I mixing my USFL and XFL teams? Should they dogs. Yeah, that's something – yeah, yeah. The, I like the Battle I'm Hawks. just making that up, yeah. yeah. Sounds maybe. Right. I think the the, the winner the of the XF – the uh, that might be the hockey team. <laughs> I got it. I'll have to – we'll get research on that one. I think the XFL and the USFL should face off. And uh, and and that that would that would make is that is is that like the sports version if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's <laughs> around to hear it does it make a sound? <laughs> well, you know what, and I I am watching those broadcasts. I'm like, okay, here's what broadcasts are going to look like in five years once they get a drone cleared on the field. I just want that paycheck. I just yeah. want somebody to pay me to talk about the XFL and USFL with no pressure, and I'm just getting like six figures, and there's no chance it's leading to anything, but you're just like, sure, I'll take your money. That sounds good. Yeah, we should start a podcast. Is it is this an XFL team or a USFL team? And our two listeners 
uh, my mom and your mom would uh, would be very happy. <laughs> uh, final question for you here about the Phoenix Suns. Um, if they play Dallas, you think they're going to win? How yep, much? How how, how 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 much does the franchise need that one? Um, really bad. It's a real rivalry. It really means something. And Devin Booker and Luka Doncic really dislike each other. And it pains me to say, but Luka, Luka zinged Devin again at the end of that game last week when he said, hey, maybe not wait until the final three seconds when I've missed the layup to talk trash. Devin's got to back it up, man. Talk your talk. Talk your game. I'm all for it. But you got to back it up if these two teams play. I've made the case, Mark. I just want Adam Silver to go full-blown Dana White, Vince McMahon. Make the match, you coward. Forget about rigging the draft for Victor Wenbanyama. Nobody cares about that weirdo seven-foot-four Frenchman. Like, give us Mavs, Suns, best of seven. Everybody wins. That is what the NBA used to be about. I think even casual fans could tune into that without a rooting interest and be like, oh, I'm picking a side in this, and it's not for the NBA championship. It's probably not for the Western Conference championship, but to me, Maverick Suns is the absolute best of what the NBA can be right now. I'm just Adam Silver. I, I believe three people are, are the listening audience. It's your mom, my mom, Adam Silver. Make the match, you pencil neck geek. Uh, this, here's a vote for Jody Yaler to be the next NBA commissioner, by the way. You've been listening to him here on the Extra Point Podcast. Hey, and we, we really appreciate your time today. Really appreciate the perspective. And, hey, let's do this in studio around March Madness. We have about 4,000 shows we have to do, so let's get you down here. Uh, if you go get the dry cleaning, and let's make this happen. I'm game, Mark. Hey, man, I appreciate the invite, and uh, always a pleasure. The Extra Point Podcast is a production of 3TV, CBS5, and azfamily.com in Phoenix, Arizona.